Today on In the Wood Yard, we're here with this guy. Came all the way from where? Lafayette, Indiana. Lafayette, Indiana. And you have a YouTube channel, I don't you? I do have a YouTube channel. And the name of it is? 765 Guys. That's pretty cool. And you are? My name is Jenin. And then your partner is? Quentin. Quentin. And you guys make wood and do stuff. We make a lot of, not a lot of firewood. We make firewood, we play with chainsaws, tractors, that kind of thing. Cool. Well, today he's here and we're going to do a bunch of work. So let's get going. Let's go. So this morning, we got up early, it was six o'clock when we met, and we've got all day to play with tools, and he brought a whole bunch of fun toys. Now, you're not gonna see them all today, because we have so much to do. We have many days worth of videos we're gonna be making. So today, we'll probably make three or four videos. And the, one of the main ones here is you wanna come and play with the Ultra, because you never ran an Ultra before, correct? I've never ran an Ultra. Um, after I got in firewood, I knew I needed a better splitter, and I wanted an Ultra. There was none available. No. So I had to buy an Eastamade 1222. Oh, okay. That's nice. Did you buy a brand new one? I didn't. I found it local. There's no, so there's no wait time. No yep. kidding. So you got it right away. Yeah, if I was going to wait on one, this is what I would have waited on. Right, right. But yeah, a local guy had the 1222, and it was like brand new. He used it a couple times. and No kidding. I got it, but this is what I've always wanted. Really? So, yeah, so wanted why did you always want this? Um, the price, for one. I yeah. love the price. The price yeah. is really good, and I just I like the idea of been able to reach around everything because yep. um, my 1222 is the opposite you stand right here the wood comes out down there it's this yeah. is you can really use it one man show here right one guy can use it but two is really fast yes. and that's the other thing the reason i got it was speed yes it's just really fast very, very it's fast. it's faster than a 1222 it's it's considerably faster just because it's easier to move around, it's easier to work around, and you can work from either side. It's just, it's quick. I don't know Especially how to describe it. if you're re-splitting, this is way quicker to run a four-way and right. re-split wood than the 1222, because the 1222 sucks to reach all the way over right. and grab right. wood and bring it back. Where this, you can just slide it. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, and I just recently ran, uh, Tyler bought a semi-pro from Brute Force, and it's really nice, too. It's real similar. A little bit bigger, but very nice also. So yeah, we're gonna run this today, but the next thing we're gonna do, I've gotta empty this. So we're gonna go build a bin and we're gonna empty this, and then we're gonna do some cutting, and then we're gonna do some splitting, and then we're gonna run the processor, and then we're gonna play with some saws. So got the next three, four days, you're gonna see a whole bunch of this guy with a whole bunch of cool tools, so. You're gonna to wanna to see the saws. Oh yeah. Chris yeah. has got some competition <laughs> in the wood yard. <laughs> It'll be fun, so let's get going. Okay, so we just got done tossing the uh, pieces in here from the trailer, and what do you think of the bin system? Um, it's a really good idea to keep the wood off the ground, to not have to stack it, air flows through. Better than stacking. Better than stacking. Better than Everything stacking. beats stacking. Yeah. Now, you do totes. I do totes. And totes work really good, but you gotta buy the totes up. You get them for free, yep. so there's that. I love stacking on the totes right from the table to this tote. I could stack all day, day that way, right. but I could not stack all day out of your dump trailer into the pallets that's yeah and when you're doing the volume i am that's where it yeah. gets old real fast because if you do 200 full cords it's a lot of stacking that's and i figure stuff. i'm going to be saving at least a few weeks maybe a month's worth of work in stacking by doing it this way because when i deliver my wood i know my truck itself holds a third of a cord or a face cord so i just put it level in my trailer if i'm doing two face cords i have to go just to the metal on the sides if i'm doing a full cord i go to the first board if i do four face cords or a full cord and a third i go right to the top and if i heap it i can go five face cords or a full cord and two thirds if you prefer so i just know what i'm having and if i think it looks good i throw a little bit extra mm -hmm. in so but the nice thing is that there are guys now that are doing totes or they're doing racks where they're stacking it and they've got a third of a cord or a half a cord and they're just dumping it in i like that but you still got to get it stacked in there but then they're dumping it with their their handler now the one thing a lot of people have told me about is you know why don't you get the bags or why don't you get totes lift them with the fork set them in the trailer and then go deliver them well then when you get to deliver them how do you unload them 
Well, they don't ever think of that. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I will deliver my wood in the tote. Sometimes if I'm doing just a third of a cord, I'll put the tote in the back of my truck. And yep. if I don't have to stack it, I'll deliver it that way because I can stand in my truck and just chuck, chuck it, it all out. So you're chucking but if I have to stack yeah. it, then now I've got to take it from the tote to the tailgate to the end product and that doesn't work. Yeah. Well, that's why the bags to me, unless you've got some type of a piece of machinery that you take with you, like a little, you know, what would it be? Forklift or I don't a know. A little forklift. They make them that you know that you drive into the back and lift yourself up. I've never thought about that with the bags of how people unload yeah. them. It's easy to fill them with the conveyor. And Unless you've them. got a boom on your trailer that you can run a boom and uh, you got to get them off of there somehow. Yeah. And if you dump them, does the bag tip over? Do you yeah. break the bag open? I mean, there's all those things to think about. Plus, it's 20 bucks a bag, right? That's what they cost, 25 never bucks a bag. never looked into them. I don't think it's, it's going to work for me. So. Something like that. And I would need seven or 800 of them. So it would be... It's a consumable. Fifteen to twenty thousand dollars a year, and it, they don't last yeah. forever. No, no, and totes would be okay too, but they don't last forever either. They fall apart, and it's just a lot of extra work for me. So for now, I'm doing this. Eventually, and you would ask me this: What's my long term? Long term, there may be a day where everything is cement, and I've got the, you know, cement. Um, what do you call them? Barriers yep. that I place, and I just scoop everything up and dump it in the trailer. Maybe I get to that someday. I don't know. We'll see. Let's go do some more work. Let's do it. So what happened was uh, we ran the processor for, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes maybe, and one of the rings went out on it and it needed to be replaced. So we quit running it and then we did a little talk about the actual splitter and what he liked about it, what, what you know, things that he was looking for over the 1222, but because there were technical difficulties, I lost the footage. I had no voice on that and it was only about... A minute and a half long there was no audio so what I'm going to do now is just kind of explain what we talked about and throw some footage in from another day of splitting here and what we were talking about was how when you are splitting you can take pieces that are you know small like this that are, you just need to resplit and you can hold them up and run them through whereas with the 1222 it's a lot harder to do that because it's such a much bigger machine um, and that's something that um, a lot of people like, and Jinnin was saying that um, he liked the, the ease of how the machine could be worked from both sides, how uh, the four-way wedge is still adjustable, but yet you can use it like a single wedge a lot of the time where you can let the piece slide underneath or hold it up and go over the top. Um, the fact that it's fast and the big thing is that you can move it around by hand. You can position the whole machine pretty easily without having to use machinery to get it anywhere. And that little dolly I have actually works quite well to pull it almost anywhere I want to go. Um, I do hook it up to the truck occasionally to move it. Sometimes I will hook it up to the tractor and pull it around. But most of the time I'll just grab it and, you know, if, if I have the tongue on the front, I can swing it around, pull it in and out, move it around different places I want to go. Uh, if I've got to go all the way from the barn out to the... Uh, bins where I've got the wood a lot of times I'll just use the dolly to hook it up and pull it out there it's not that hard it's it, it's yeah, obviously be easier if you just hook that up to an ATV or the tractor or truck whatever uh, but it is pretty easy to move whereas most other commercial splitters you can't do that they're too heavy they're too big they're too bulky plus the ultra it's really nice which um, a lot of people say the reason they pick it is their cost you can get one of these for $5,000, less than that, and then shipping. So you're looking at $5,500, $6,000, something like that. It's a very fast splitter, so your production is tremendous. I have now run, I don't know how many, 1,500, 2,000 cords through this thing. I don't know. A lot. It just eats the wood right up. It just keeps going and going and going. And so far, the only thing that I have had go wrong is I had uh, sets of O-rings up in the valve go wrong twice now, where uh, it had some 
debris in there and they just got shredded so we took them out it didn't cost more than 10 bucks to change it no big deal but then just recently you're going to see coming up on a video i did finally change the filter and the hydraulic fluid because it was the original stuff i'd had it in there for i don't know a couple years so a lot of a lot of hours on it I don't even know what it is. Oh, it's starting to rain. Uh, yeah, this is from another day. I just thought I'd put some footage in here and talk about it. So anyway, um, we both agreed. Great machine, great price. Um, mine is nice because it's got the Honda engine, the new ones. I have the Vanguards, but still a really nice little splitter. It's definitely a big step up from a box store. Maybe not quite as expensive or as big as a commercial grade splitter. But all around, really nice.